Hello, I'm Rob. And I'm Rob. And today you got something a little bit different. Uh, it is technically a conversation about Destiny 2, like it just popped up there. But we're not doing one of these highly edited 10, 15 minute jobs. We're doing one of these. I played an hour probably badly and <laughs> we're going to sort of run through it as it happens. Okay. This should be fun. Is it, I don't want to say a let's play because it's such an overdone term, but yeah, here we are uh, on Destiny. What's your experience with Destiny? Oh, it's, a first up, person it shooter. It, it's a first-person shooter, so obviously it's not immediately my cup of tea. Well, this will be an experience. Yeah, I don't mind. So, yeah. Mr. Zazobra? That's my username, yeah, obviously. Okay, you're going to um, have to explain that username. A username, yeah, there's a thing in Mexico, there's a festival, I can't remember what it is, and the Zobra is a massive um, effigy which is burned. Okay. And it was the name of a record for a metal band called Old Man Gloom, and I thought, ooh, I like that, and it's kind of been a sort of odds adopted moniker for ooh. years now. I saw a fancy oh. spaceship, that makes me happy. I like spaceships. Yeah, there's, three, there's three classes. There's three classes. Um, there's humans, which is boring. Okay. There is... So sort of blue faced magic guys, which is boring. Or oh, there's a character type called Exo, which has a robot head. And obviously, you know, she have given me a chance to be Mr. Robot Head Man. It's a okay. no brainer. Alright, okay. So the blue faced magic guys, are they like the avatar type people? Uh, not quite. Just blue faced with a little bit of makeup on. And I think a bit of story might help here. First game. Yeah, there was a thing that appeared called the Traveller. It helped mankind evolve. It helped the technology evolve, but it also made a lot of people come picking fights with mankind. So, yeah, lots of war. That's kind of the gist of the first one. Second one, massive race turns up, turns off the, the Traveller, basically, and takes away everybody's powers. So, that was pretty wild. Basically... Yeah, like the guardians. Guardians are the people who are given powers by the traveller. The little ghost. The ghost was the thing which. Um, what was he called? The little uh, Game of Thrones fella. Who? It's an insensitive way of putting it. But... Oh, Lannister. <laughs> um, Tyrion Lannister. Yeah, that's not his real name. Yeah, you said the little Game of Thrones fella, so I'm going to give you his he... Game of Thrones name. Yeah, Peter Dinklage. Yeah. He he was notorious for being bad in the first one. He's a ghost, and your ghost follows you around and does all your talking for you. Um, this is the second okay. planet. What's that thing? That's the ghost. He kind of, he brings things up and he tells you where to go. You see that little icon that was on screen? Yeah. He's telling me where to go. So that's supposed and to be just, Peter Dinklage? Not in this one, not in this one. I don't know who voices it in this one. It's not a particularly... Uh, it's not a particularly well memorable name, and I'm going to, just going to. I've never, never noticed that before. Sort of the uh, the difference between when you're looking out, when it's all like sort of nice and bright, sort of glary. Yeah, yeah. The uh, thing is, I like that sort of effect. My my main issue with first person shooters, as you well know, is that they make me feel seasick. Um, well, it should be okay because, as this footage will tell you later, I'm terrible. <laughs> and you're assuming I'm any good yeah I know like yeah I'm bored so I think I'm not going down there I'm going to have a look up here see if this door opens that's Which the way doesn't. I've always played games okay let's have a look what's over there I like the fact what's that it's safety door? first and you're going to do everything but yeah yeah I mean there's just, yeah some bit where I obviously get lost by doing that but <laughs> You know, sail of V. Okay, so this I'm assuming like a, this is some kind of oil rig. Well, yeah, it's like a mining planet. Because uh, this actually reminds me of um, a massively underappreciated shooter from last year. Was it Titanfall Two? Okay, it's a bit dark, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> that's on, one of my. You're basically problems. jumping from platform to platform. Is this just a glorified platformer that just happens to be first person? No, it's just you've, you've got triple jump. I don't like having triple jump. What the but, Triple jump? Yeah. What are you, some kind of athlete? The Guardian. The Guardian. 
Look one, two. There's two. Nice shadow. He's got legs as well. Yeah. Look at that lens. That's nice. That is nice. And I can't get up there. One, two, three. See? That was really good timing. It was almost like a plan, that. See, you say triple jump. I'm just thinking, like, athletics. You know, hop, skip, jump. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> You're a smart ass, Rod. <laughs> yes, I know. But no, no. I mean, this level's, like... It's it expands like uh, to new planets every couple of missions. Story mission. This is a story mission. It's pretty early on. I didn't want to give any story spoilers away. So okay. this does come pretty early on in the game. Okay, so uh, you found an airplane. Second... Is that or a train? And this is the planet which you just kind of went. No, in front of you. Yeah, yeah. That's a like a spaceship that's gone knackered. And yeah. This okay. What was I saying? You kind of distracted me from a train of thought. Sorry. Okay. Now it's really dark. Yeah, there's a thing in here because uh, your guardians and you can um, basically regenerate thanks to the ghost character. Okay. In those areas where there's spawning band, or you're not allowed to regenerate. So these are some kind of bioform. Are yeah, these so robots? If you die, you have to start the whole thing again in these areas. That's the whole point of that. Ah. Okay. Generally, you just regenerate where you die. Okay, that's not too bad. At least you don't have to start the whole level from the beginning again. Bloody. But usually in these areas, it throws big numbers at you. Uh, and in this case, it makes the lights all spooky. Yay! So jump as you scares. tell, I'm being Who kind of tentative. <laughs> uh, I was going to say jump scares. Who doesn't like jump scares? There's not jump scares. It's just crikey. There's lots of people. I better run away. Technique. That's what the. <laughs> I do. See, I love the sure. idea of running away backwards on precarious footing because that's a good idea. It wouldn't work in reality, would it? No, it wouldn't. Because you it know is, the first uh... thing that would happen is you'd go off some kind of edge and die on a spike down below. Uh, I do think that actually happens at some point. Not dying, but I do fall off and it makes the character look like kind of a tit, even though he's Exos face, McExo. Well, whatever. Some punny, funny pun on... The fact that he's got an exoskeleton for a facing looks awesome. Okay, so... Yeah. Are these robots, then, or are these kind of organic things? Well, they call them, like, Fallen. Because they were one of the species who had some sort of dominion on uh, the in the universe, in the, in the footing of the... The galaxy, or whatever you want to word it. Who is it and who makes fallen, Destiny? Our species who are beaten. Uh, who um, is it who makes Destiny? Bungie. Was that Bungie. the beginning of the video? Okay. Wasn't it? Uh, well, not too Bungie. Please think of better sci fi names because calling something the Fallen is boring as shit. Yeah. As you notice, this is a bit where I get lost because it's too dark and I can't see where I'm going. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's nice. The lighting effects are gorgeous. I will. Yeah, I'll, that. I'll admit the lighting effects are great. But <laughs> I like to see where I'm going. I'm never letting you direct us if we're travelling anywhere. <laughs> well, if you take me to a dark place, I'm like, not I am Garth not taking Marenghi's. you to any dark places. <laughs> if you take me to Garth, Darth Marenghi's Garth, oh, Garth Marenghi's dark place, I don't even know what I'm saying now. Garth Marenghi's. <laughs> See, yeah, I'll, I'll get lost. This is another bit. It's like dark. I can't see. I can't see. If this is dead space, I'd just say no. I'm not going in there. See, if it was dead pit, dead space, I'd be right in there. Yeah. Yeah, it does shoot and burst the guns. There's an awful lot of them, and I don't like them. I know it's semi-automatic and it makes sense, but you know, just yeah, but they have cooler effects than you when it shoots. Yeah, I know, but I've got other guns, and, and you've got, like you've seen a little while ago, I've got supercharge mode. Also, for people who know the game, I'm playing the Hunter class. I always okay. tend to do, you know, when you play Skyrim or whatever, I will play the guy with like, the bow and arrow. Okay, just, so, so what classes do you have in Destiny 2? Right, now you're asking me. I just looked at Hunter and picked it, but there's... it. it I don't think it's about the... Um, the class so much as the powers and what you identify with. Okay. And in this one, he... Currently speaking, the one I have equipped, 
uh, is basically he brings out a massive sort of light sword and starts chopping everything up. I do it a few times in this video, so you will see it. I'm not just sort of talking about abstract things. So he has a lightsaber. No, it's nothing like a lightsaber. It sounds in description, but no. You see my technique here, I'm just waiting. Look there, he has legs. Did you see his legs? That's an important part of a uh, first-person shooter. Stupid as well, so just gloss over this. You know, what happened in here? It's not like I can't shoot around that. I can't see him. He keeps on popping around. Stay still. You tit. It's called cover. It, it, yeah, it's, it's called it's, cover. You can see how I'm playing it. It's not really a cover. I'm not playing it cover game, so maybe I'm just bad at it. So I just run around. Well, it's not necessary that you have to play it as a cover shooter. It is just a first-person shooter. It's not like Gears of War or anything like that. Uh, no. That sort of stuff has kind of killed the shooter. It has its place, but, you know... I never it's really got used... Now. The thing about cover shooters, everyone was saying Gears of War is just, oh, it's the... It, you know, it, it's brought a new type of gaming, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well... What? Did everyone forget Time Crisis was the thing? I, well, it was in Doom. Was it in Doom or was it? No, it was Homefront. Homefront, it was in Homefront. Long before Homefront, Time Crisis was a cover shooter with a gun. Uh, yeah, to a degree. Yeah, it was See a that green thing yeah. there? That's, that's yeah. where you get your sort of your pickups from. Green sort of common. Yeah. yeah time, common crisis was, time Crisis was a rail shooter, yeah, but you still had to take cover. It's a that's cool grenade I just threw there. Did you? Oh, yeah, are they running away going. from you? Are they scared of you? Oh yeah, look, I'm just powered up. Why are they scared of you? It's you. Because the Guardians are kind of like the universe's big shots. Are they? Yeah. Well, they got their powers from the Traveller, so how can they be the big shots? Somebody gave them well, their abilities. So the well, person... It's not a small one, it's like a big white planet. A big white planet? Yeah, so if you look at sci-fi and think... This doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I don't think you're going to get very far. You're talking to a sci-fi junkie. Yeah, I know, but it's like you get your powers from an omnipotent white planet, which gives you space ghosts. See, m my first question about that would be, is the planet an albino? Because then I'd say, okay, right, fine. So the planet's an albino planet, so that means it must be special. If it's just yeah, a it's generic shield. white planet, though. It's a big white planet. Whitewashing. Terribly racist. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> uh, yeah, different, different classes of uh, enemies. You know, he's got a shield there. You might see it. Oh no, I just killed him. I killed him good. So I've got to ask: if there's a white planet, is there uh, is, is there a black planet, and is the black planet the evil one? Oh, it's just massive compared to the white one. Jokes. They <laughs> have all the jokes. <laughs> That was, that was horrible. That was that was a horrible joke. I think many people have made that joke before me. Hey. So, <laughs> we're about, what, 15 minutes in near enough now. You're shooting lots of things in the face. What, 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 what's, your, what's your opinion so far? It's quite fast-paced with the action, but it's kind of confusing. I'm still not sure what your purpose is. Well, it's an MMO fundamentally, isn't it? Well, you just I, go there, I, kill the bad guy, fix the thing. Yeah, and to me, that's kind of tedious. That's just basically a fetch quest with shooting. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess. I mean, right now, I'm going somewhere to fix the thing. That's what I mean. It's go there, go there, do this, go there, do that. Along the way, shoot some stuff in the face. I like that. Yeah, the... the Production design in this. I thought I could jump through there. I was just testing. <laughs> no, the the design is great. Don't get me wrong. I love the environments. I love the lighting effects. I think it's really cool. But uh... it's a queue in the control center. That's what I'm doing right now. And let's put it this way: the the last first person shooter that I actually played to death. Uh, yeah. Was uh, what was it? Uh, it was the uh, second Metro game. Yeah, yeah. This is like more arcadey. Yeah, and obviously the thing is, I could really get into that because 
a good portion of that was kind of first person stealth. Stealth for idiots. I've got a grenade launcher in my hand. I don't mean that, like that. I mean uh, that uh, the, the, it had some hairy moments. There was one bit where you had to walk through a crowd of Nazis and try not to be noticed. You had to walk casually and not break into a run straight off the bat. Was it that walk casually? Uh, yeah. Really dramatically and whistling. No, no, no. Not like that. It's not like <laughs> it's not like the Great Escape. Yeah. Although technically I mean, it was kind of like that. This, uh... Getting back on topic a little bit. This level is really cool because um, you go underneath it in a, a, le a level. Yeah. And it's basically, you know, like in Alien. Is it Alien or is it Aliens? Yeah, Aliens. When the planet has been taken over by the Xenomorphs and it's all kind of broken and yeah. biological and messed up. Yeah, I, I see what you mean. See, this this level that you're on right now, that it make a really good multiplayer map, I reckon. Oh yeah, I mean, it's got multiplayer on it, but I'm not going to go on multiplayer because, as you can see, I'm not very good and I keep on looking for things and I'm very tentative and one foot forward, two foot back. You know, which, which is fine. But, I mean, it plays largely the same as the first one. I mean, with a game like this, you can't reinvent the wheel, can you? No, I mean... Uh... It's a first-person shooter, and how many different ways can you do a first-person shooter? Seven. I don't even think Off it's that many. Two, whatever the answer was. I think there's just one, and there's just variations on that one. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> the thing about this, though, it's... Uh, if you're paying close attention to where the gameplay is going, there's a kind of momentum to it. Yeah. Where it, it drags you into its speed of doing things. Yeah, I get that. I, I'm getting that from uh, the way you play. It's, you know, you obviously like to take more time to do things, but uh, this game is pulling you to do things at a much faster pace than maybe you used to. This is like a classic example, this little bit here. It's a, it wants me to go in there and kill all the sacks. Yeah. Dan the sack and all the other sacks. <laughs> it's a hip hop joke, an electronic joke. I'm not going in there. I'm going to have a look around here, see what else there is. But that little thing is saying, go over there, check that room. And I'm like, no, I want to see what's up there. <laughs> That's the classic we have always played. Okay. Any so sort of game, if you really. want to explore somewhere else and not follow the mission, does it block you from doing that using like stupid invisible walls or something like that? Uh, no, not necessarily. It's just this is a story mission, so nothing else. there's nothing else to do until you've done this. And as you can tell, it's saying go in there, but I'm like, I step in, loads of things come out of it. Nah, I'll, I'll just, I'll wait, I'll wait. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm tentative, I'm nervy. Well, not necessarily nervy, I just, you want to take your time and do it properly. Okay, so you have to shoot all the low hanging fruit. All the, you have to hit, hit, shoot all the alien nut sacks. I mean, what they are? Destroy the alien plums. <laughs> well, you just yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> I mean, it's not a lot of law to this, but if, if you want to say shoot the alien nut sacks, <laughs> nah, no, I said that. There you go. There's my superpower. So that's nothing like a lightsaber, is it? It. it it's a bit kind of, uh, what was it, uh, Darth Maul, rather than a lightsaber, you know, the uh, light staff type thing. Yeah, yeah, I get you. I get you entirely. <sighs> I love the fact that it just took you several shots to take out that... Uh, that the thing is, there's recoil and everything. <laughs> I told you I'm rubbish. <laughs> it's the, you know... <laughs> It could be worse. The energy gun that I have at that moment is especially recoily. Okay, so I've got to ask. You've played the Halo games, obviously. How does no, this... No, I have not. Have you not? No, not one. Have you not played a Halo game? Not one. So I've actually played a first-person shooter that you've never played? I've never played a Halo game. I've never watched an episode of Game of Thrones. 
And I've never watched an episode of Breaking Bad. And I've just stabbed a lot of people in the face there. Okay. Uh, Breaking Bad was kind of overrated, so it was good for what it was, but it was still just a little bit... A little bit overhyped. Yeah, yeah. Well, my point is that you, just because something's popular doesn't mean I follow it. That's that's all I'm getting at. Yeah, all I was getting at was uh, I'm surprised with you playing as many first-person shooters as you have that you've never played Halo. And these days, yeah. with, these days with gaming culture the way it is, that's kind of like saying you've never seen Star Wars. Really? Yeah. That's kind of cool. <laughs> Because, you know, if you haven't watched Star Wars, you haven't been subjected to all that awful crap. Yeah. Because yeah. there's more bad Star Wars than good Star Wars now, so it's it's like alien in that regard. Well, there's only really two... two and a half good Star Wars movies. See, they're the things you have to collect. Helios, HC, one go on. Yeah. There's only two and a half good Star Wars movies. Um, the entirety of The Empire Strikes Back. And the... Uh, the entirety of Return of the Jedi and the second half of <laughs> the original Star Wars. Yeah. Re you don't really have a chance to appreciate it when you're just playing it. Yeah. Because it's all go, 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 go. As you can tell, it's very fast-paced. Okay, what was the big red thing that you just took a shot at? Nothing. That's just what this gun has. It has like this little... It's not quite like Borderlands had... A million different guns, oh, right. but every gun will so have a different like a thing, like that. That's that like, outlines people. Yeah, that's like a thermal imaging type thing, I suppose. Yeah, it doesn't really work in the daylight. It's kind of useless. So I'll just get a grenade launcher out and shoot this guy in the face. And miss. So ah, are these still like the those... those biological organisms that are just attacking you for no reason at all. If you start questioning why things are fighting in games, you're kind of wasted on games really, aren't you? Yeah, but this is the point I'm making, you know, first person... Sh in fact, pretty much all games have this idea that you shoot first and ask questions later. I mean, what happened to diplomacy? What happened to dialogue? What happened to trying to, you know, uh, meet in the middle and just find some common grounds for the greater good? What you're saying is admirable and, and lovely and all that, but this is the universe at war. So This is when Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un have taken their shirts off and they're having a fight in the school playground. You do know that if Donald Trump and, and Kim Jong-un took all the their shirts off... Shout, fight, fight, fight. All the friends are doing that. This is what's happening here. Yeah, see, you... you you do know that you've said Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un taking their shirts off and now there's fan fiction. Ah, it existed long before I said that. I don't think so. I think now you've said it. You know, the gloves are off. Rule, 40, uh, Rule 34 is a thing. Yeah. I kind of got overwhelmed a bit here. Because lots of men. <laughs> and they're all men as well. This is very... We can pick a woman character, but... There's not many of them in this, and they all own shops. So I don't know what Bungie you're trying to say, but... Yeah, uh, I'd be a bit concerned about what Bungie are trying to say with that. Yeah. I'm not going to... I'm not going to fill in that blank, but sure. I guess that's why, you know, you've got to kind of be... Oh, yeah. Do you just get hit in the face by somebody? Yeah, this is my blimey. There's lots of people over there. Run away, run away. Monty Python technique. This is your best Sir Robin impression. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can look at it, turn around and run, and then realise I've got to be over there. Uh, I better go back. <laughs> so, that's just the way these games are designed, but I like that it's becoming much more fast-paced, like normal... Uh, yeah, there's me going back and falling <laughs> over like you. <laughs> That's exactly what I expect to happen if you if you start shooting while walking backwards or running backwards. Well, it's better than what some people do. I mean, when you're playing multiplayer stuff, you'll see like the strafing, the strafe of Doom technique. Oh, where they strafe right off the edge of the platform. No, when they just go to side to side to side to side to side to side, and they just basically make themselves as hard to shoot as possible, which is it makes sense, but 
It's bloody annoying. Apparently there's a way around you know, that. What, like, you know, appar apparently the way to get around that is literally to get up close and personal with them. Ah, yeah, but they usually got a good shot because people spend an inordinate amount of time on any game and Destiny's no different. People do spend did you just shoot that guy and in? Did you just sh shoot that guy in the family jewels? Yes. <laughs> hey, he he came for this party. I've got I've got to do stuff, and you know, yeah. I've got to shoot that big man, and he's good. You got to shoot this big man, have you? Commander, it's I don't know. He's a big man. <laughs> but I like that um, shooters are becoming much more fast-paced and energetic. Okay. Doom, Doom was a, I think Doom was in between the two um, destinies. And Doom was an incredible game, but that for me, very gory. I found. Oh yeah, but it's just silly. It's popularised it again that you know Call of Duty sort of crouch between, uh, uh, behind some cover, and then do some other things. There he am. That's what he looks like. That's the man. This is like the power up system. Okay. So you got so double like jump. Power, the, and what what was it called? The staff. What was the staff called? The Acme staff was it? Axe Strider. Oh, Hunter right. subclass. See. Lethal current combination blow. Marksman's dodge. Gambler's dodge. Yeah. Axe staff. It's called. Okay. So it's quite light on the RPG stuff. It's mostly in the kit. Okay. Which was a point of great controversy for the first game. I like your catalogue model pose in this one. <laughs> in this. Yeah. That mask that he's got on there looks like Princess Leia when she turns up. Oh, the bounty um, gunner mask. Yeah. So you're going to take it off at some point and go, someone who loves you. Because if you say yeah, that, um, I'm leaving this conversation. Yeah, because he, he, yeah, Han Solo was frozen for like two years or something. And the first thing he said, he sees is somebody saying someone who loves you. It's like, whoa. No, the, <laughs> first, thing he, the first thing he sees is not someone who loves him. <laughs> no. Because uh, he's blind, remember, when he comes out the carbonate. Yeah. But he throws this stuff at you. As much as like the stuff what Star Wars, it does throw this stuff at you. What do you think of the character? What Does she look cool? Uh, what? See, now you've, I've got care. Now you've mentioned... Uh, the Princess Leia character, all I can see is the Princess Princess Leia character, and I'm just expecting one of your things. See, that little box thing that you said, your little uh, AI thing, now looks yeah. like the thermal detonator that <laughs> Princess Leia's holding. I mean, I can live with the fact that I'm playing Princess Leia in this. She, she was cool, Princess Leia. Of course she was. See? Thermal detonator. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> fair, fair point, fair point. No, it's fine. Yeah, I mean, it's fine to be. Proud I rely. Of I mean, yeah. Princess Leia was a cool princess. I rely on that ghost thing because, like I said earlier, it's so easy to get lost. Yeah, Princess. Uh, I'll say something. Princess Leia was, uh, you know, when she's one of those when your when your princess grows up to be a general and you just think, yeah, that's awesome. That's completely badass. Yeah. If only not measured by who she who she who she fancies. There's yeah. a blue man in the background. You see the blue man. He does other stuff in the blue man group <laughs> in Las Vegas. But hard times have hit Vegas, so the blue man group have got to armor up. No, I think I think they wouldn't let him in the blue man group, which is why he's armored up. <laughs> he's gone to one the... man war against the blue man group. He's gone to the space foreign legion. <laughs> Yeah. You see why I didn't pick them? I don't. I didn't think that was a particularly interesting thing. But character I am, he's got robot man head. Yeah, they call him Blue Diddly <laughs> or Blue Diddly. He's making up your own story now, mad person. <laughs> I think it was Bo Diddly, or was it? It was somebody Bo something. Some story about some guy who went to join the Foreign Legion. No, it wasn't Bo Bridges. I worry about you. I believe you can. I'm worried about this guy. He looks... He's one of sort of the main story characters. He's like one of the the human leaders, even though it'd be debatable whether you can call him a human or not.
No, he's obviously human, you know, two eyes at the front, a nose, a mouth, you know, bipedal. Oh, words to that effect. Yeah, it's almost like you don't take this game seriously whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> Could you tell? <laughs> All right, we're not out of this yet. Yeah, we're not out of this yet. We're halfway in, two story missions, not really spoilery. Okay. Sirens watch, that's where I am. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is the Red War. Yeah. So is this red versus blue? No. I was going to say. Not. Even though the, a... the Halo link does make sense. <laughs> I was going to say, because that's a whole other thing. Yeah. Have I died yet in this, by the way? I think you did early on. You died and then you resurrected in the same spot. Yeah. Which isn't bad. Although it's, it's difficult really... to say whether you did actually die because there's lots of special effects and lots of glowing and lots of shooting stuff in the face and in the junk. Hey, if it takes a man down, it takes a man down. It takes you any do man see down. me. Yeah, it would. Shoot him right in the plums. I do rely on that quite a lot because the level design's not particularly great. And it's awfully dark, so... Are you on about the little floaty cubey thing? Yeah. Thanks. So I got a, it tells you where to go, like that little reticule that's floating in the screen. And I'm trying to shoot those things to make sure they explode, but... Because, you know, you shoot a barrel in a, in a first-person shooter, and the trope is that they explode. Well, only certain types. I and mean, let's yeah, be fair, if yeah, all barrels exploded in first-person shooters... Lots of people would die very, very quickly. Yeah, this is too dark in here. Oh no, the spooky ghost. Yeah. Don't ask me what that is. Please don't ask me what that is. I'm not getting up and close. I'm doing the cowards way out of multiplayer gaming. Because somebody else is having a fight with that over there. And I'm just being a coward from miles away. And shooting it. I'm totally claiming that win. I totally killed it. Okay. Did you say the hero would run in there and get involved? See, they're taking shots at you now. Yeah, so it's the old run away. <laughs> and then you realise that everybody everywhere is trying to kill you. So I stabbed him in the face. You're too many people. So you you played this on the PS4, didn't you? Yeah, I did. How is it in terms of controlling on the PS4? Um, well, there's nothing really out of the ordinary for it. It's it plays very smooth, as you can see. Uh, super responsive. Okay. It's just I know a lot of purists say that you, these sorts of games you're better off playing on a PC because the mouse and keyboard controls are superior. But I don't know whether well, that's the truth or not. Yeah, it's just it's not about being superior. It's just I think with consoles, first-person shooters have for a long time struggled to find what is the right way to do it. Because there was before. There was twin sticks. It was just kind of a mess. Mm. If you recall that far back, and like with Medal of Honor. And Hang on. Stuff if like if that, I recall back. that far back. Yeah, I know you play a lot of games. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. Would you Not care to rephrase? Sort of you know. Would you care to rephrase that to me? All right. In your youth, back when you were only like 50 years old. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember? If I can recall that far uh, back. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, what was I saying again? You kind of... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, First Person Shoot was kind of looking for their way to work. Yeah. And I think they found their way to work. And historically, people who say that mouse and keyboard is the best way are referring to the fact that uh, that's been perfected for a very long time. Okay. Whereas... First-person shooters on consoles have only really been perfected when the game is, you know, 
not Call of Duty and not cover based nonsense for not a great deal of time. So history makes, you know, the PC thing the more established and more righteous. That's the way I look at it anyway. I mean, we all have our own interpretation. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm uh, just watching this, and uh, one of the things that I find amusing, right? I love the environment design, stuff like that. It's just, uh, I love the fact that they're going through the whole kind of, uh, oh yeah, we have to do this sort of environment, so we're going to have to put some lighting in there, because obviously people need lights to see. And I'm thinking, well, you're right giving your powers by some albino planet, uh, which give you superpowers, so couldn't it also give you kind of auto night vision or the ability to see in the dark so you wouldn't need these lights which are yeah. only really see, useful they're only kind of a narrative thing that they put in yeah, yeah. for advent human adventurers who can't actually see in the dark whereas you know if it was fantasy yeah. if you're a dwarf or an elf or something like that you have excellent night vision you're going into the whole sort of thing you know like with detective mode and that thing on the, far, the, the new hitman games where you can see in the dark Oh, stealth vision or whatever you want to call it. That's awfully close to that. Yeah. And I think there's too much of that in games. No, I mean, just an auto night vision mode. So when you have, whenever you enter a dark place, it just automatically switches on and off. It's not something that you choose. It's just something that happens because you you can see in the dark. So you don't need... He has need... a torch. Yeah, well, he has a torch, but, you know... he's <laughs> supposed it's to be really super... dark, he has a torch. He's supposed to be superhuman, for crying out loud. Hey. Superhumans have to pay. I don't know. I'm getting at, but <laughs> <laughs> there's a limit. There's a limit to this stuff. It's one little modification. It's a very petty thing. I mean, I had no problem with it. Hey, I'd have it. If you were going to give me a whole heap of superpowers, that'd be one of the ones that I'd take straight away. I think immortality, which this thing basically gives you, is going to trump. I can see in the dark a bit. Yeah, immortality's overrated. You do know that. I know, but if the planet gets a big lock on it, like it does in this game, your immortality goes away. Yeah, that's not why immortality's overrated. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm not going to get into that with you, Rob. No, I'd, if you were going to, if you were going to, if I had to choose, I'd go for something like, uh, well, uh, eternally twenty years old or something like that. Rather than oh, so what you're saying is you, you age. Yes. Uh, immortal it's that age old thing you're only young for a short t for a short while but you're old for a really long time yeah and if you're immortal the last thing you want to do is uh, be 85 until the end of time yeah that would be pretty rotten wouldn't it so yeah immortality is overrated always yeah, I mean make sure you read the small print Despite your best efforts to sort of make this game seem utterly ridiculous. I'm enjoying which, it. Which it is. It is ridiculous. But show me a sci-fi game which isn't. I can't. That's the problem. Every sci-fi game, every fantasy game, they're, they're ridiculous when you examine them under the microscope. I'm just basically using Destiny to... to you know, to highlight just how ridiculous these things can be. You're given magic powers by a magic planet. By an alpa magic giant albino, albino planet. planet. And it gives you a little ghost robot, which gives you immortality. So, <laughs> it does take now, now you have to go through... Oh, you shut it. See, I was hoping you'd do cartwheels and stuff like that to get out of there. No, that's just silly. <laughs> not, not, according unrealistic. To, not according to certain movies. It's so unrealistic, Rob, like this game, which is just total realism. <laughs> Look, he's got a fuss. That's a mark of a good uh, first-person shooter. He's got yes, legs. Yes, the fact that you see feet. I will agree with you on that. I know so many first-person shooters, even though I don't play that many. He's floating. I, I have played a lot, I'll be honest. I'm forever trying to find one that doesn't make me feel seasick. Does, does, I know you're not playing this, so it's not exactly... No, it's not making me feel uh, seasick, it's fine. Destiny 2 is one of the few that I would be able to sit down and play, because it, it's not making me feel seasick. What is it? Well, when you say that, what, what do you mean? It makes you feel, feel, feel more seasick? 
basically, uh, it, it's a thing. Uh, I I had to do some reading on it, but apparently, when they make these first-person shooter games, uh, some of them, some I mean, Call of Duty and other games like that are kind of guilty of it. They had a lot of motion blur during uh, fast-paced things, and the problem is your <laughs> eyes and your brain automatically incorporate motion blur because otherwise you kind of overload your brain, your eyes. If you, if it didn't, it kind of makes that for you anyway. Yeah. So yeah, if that job is already being done by something and it's it basically causes some weird imbalance and uh, makes you feel seasick. I follow. Yeah. It, 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 it's apparently to do with motion blur. I don't know whether the truth of that is. Uh, you know, I don't know what the what the truth of that is. But uh, every game that I've played that that has motion blur in every first person shooter I've played that has motion blur actually incorporated as part of the game. Uh, during the fast paced bits, I get more. I get motion sickness. But games yeah. that don't have it, I don't get. Yeah, I get you. I get you. It's just watching this back now. It's made me realise how overkill this is at times. Yeah, you are kind of badass in this, aren't you? Not particularly. I've just been lucky because I keep them backing away. Many people just go diving straight in. Whereas, as you've noticed through the past 40 minutes, I'm holding back. And shooting the big man in the in the peaches. Well, you're shooting him well, in the peaches. You'd be shooting shoot him in the bum too. If, if he, <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> if he presents his posterior, I I am more than welcome to shoot him in it. <laughs> it's it's war, you know. All's fair in love and war, as they say. I'm not even going to answer that. <laughs> so, if you need to shoot some dude in the butt. To get through the wall. That? That's just how thick that was in. That, that, look at that moon. That, that's nice. That's not a moon. It, it's for this planet. <laughs> <laughs> that was bloody Saturn, wasn't it? Who are you to tell the moon that it's not a moon in this sci fi game, which makes no sense? <laughs> and he's exploding men called Cursed. Cursed Thralls? Cursed Thrall, okay. That's a really bad name for something. Well, a Thrall is just basically uh, a servant. Well, I was thinking of the word enthralled, so they're all like reading the book and they're all just so into it, they're not paying attention to anything else. And they've got so enthralled that they start exploding. See, if they were truly enthralled, they wouldn't be chasing you. The book was just so good. It was like Lovecraft or something. It made them do stuff. Lovecraft ain't that good. Yeah, no, he's not, but I was... I'm Andrew's going to kill me now. Fear. He's not got fear. Yeah. It's contagion. Andrew's going to kill me now because I said Lovecraft, Lovecraft ain't that good. His stories are good, he's just not a great writer. It's the same as I grab them. No, Paul, no, I think. no, no. You have it wrong. His stories are good, he's just not a great person. Or oh, yeah. He was kind of despicable. He was kind of racist. Yeah. And, and sexist. And he has a moustache too, so you know he meant it. Oh no, that was poor. But yeah. still, <laughs> I was going to say you're getting still. you're getting poor and Lovecraft Lovecraft confused. Well, there's a lot of fandom crossover there. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 getting back to the core point here. Um, I like that it's faster paced. Yeah. But. What I don't like is the fact that it feels the need to throw loads of enemies at you. That seems to be sort of the thing, you know, with first-person shooters. Regardless of whether it's um, slow-paced, fast-paced, whatever. It just throws so many things at you and has like a really aggressive pacing to the thing. Yeah. And I think it's because first-person shooters, all it's about is shooting that thing. I know the, the genre kind of says you have to do that. But what I'm getting at is first-person shooters, just there you go. It's me messing about and falling over. Because I don't know where I'm going. Yeah, my point is, I think first-person shooters need to incorporate something beyond just shooting. 
There we go, falling off like a tit. <laughs> she, she get me? Yes. I do, I, I actually agree with you on that. I think that uh, first person shooters, by their nature, are very limited in what you can do with them. Which is one of the reasons why multiplayer seems to be the big thing with them. Yeah. But I mean, the multiplayer is on this, but it's most of its stock has been put into the co-op. Yeah. I'll be honest. Um, I get bored of multiplayer easily. I get bored of anything which doesn't have uh, a story that can bring me, uh, you know, make me interested in playing the game. Yeah. This has a story. I mean, the story's it has a lot of mythology. It has a lot of mythos. Yeah. But that should never be confused for a dense and uh, well intelligent story because they're just not the same thing. Yeah, they're not. I mean, you can do some great world building with it, but I mean, yeah, you can tell just by the design of it, this every little thing tells a story of what happened on this planet, and I think. That sort of contextual design as well was world building on this game, especially, is second to none, really. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you've been through this bit already. Uh, it's, the, the planets are all very limited. I'll be honest. It's. I think it's... I played the original one on PlayStation 3, so it kind of made sense for it to be quite, quite limited. But it's like when you there you go shoot him in the back. He presented it to me. He had to. But uh, yeah, it's it's like a very contained small level. But like I mentioned earlier, this this goes really far, deep down under the bowels of everything. But okay. at the same time, it's just a small area, and eh, you know, I prefer there be less planets. And more, each plant to have a bit more to it. Yeah. You know. Because this stuff will. Ah, no, it's just. It feels built for DLC. There's that small planet. Loads of missions, retreading the same area, but with different things. Yeah. Not quite as bad as sort of fetch quests. Like, pick up 99 of these feathers. What do you get for the feathers? Oh, well, your mum thinks you're great. Because, frankly, if your mum's still alive in this situation where you're a go uh, robot-faced spectre killing aliens who turn into shields, I think your mum would have a few questions to say. She'd say, when are you going to get married? And why do you have to keep on fighting these boys? Are we talking about in the game or in the real world? Well, I'm kind of meshing the two together. <laughs> I, I was going to say, because, you know... Um... <laughs> I'd play this game, my mum's perfectly fine. <laughs> Your mum would say, Why can't when are you gonna get a proper job? None of this shooting space aliens nonsense. Yeah, my reply Doesn't pay to, the bills. No, my reply to her would be, This is my job. We had this discussion. The budget's uh, quite expensive. Uh, yeah. We had this discussion before. She was asking me why I need a PlayStation why I bought a PlayStation 4 Pro. And uh I said to her, because I need it, uh, because I've got games that need to be uh, covered. She goes, oh, you spend all your time playing games. I said, no, my job is to cover these games. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You could use the Doctor Who from the 1960s techniques. Says, look, over there. And then the Daleks kind of kill themselves in some sort of weird contrivance. Are you saying my mum's a Dalek? She wants to be. <laughs> I'm pro choice. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I killed a witch there. Not that I was connecting those two lines of what I just said in any way. I finished it a ship off arm. <laughs> I'm just reacting to what's on screen right now, and I'm throwing around with a big electricity doodad. Your big electric stuff. Yeah. It, you can tell. <laughs> it should play these games weird. Like, yep. I kill something and I reload always. It's just a weird way to go about. I don't know if you've noticed it. I have that habit as well. Whenever I shoot, I reload automatically. I don't... I, I, never, I never let a clip go empty. Yeah, I'm the same. 
Which, if it was real, would just be a really awkward way because you'd have loads of magazines with like half empty clips. You'd have to sit there on the beach just sort of putting them all into the proper magazines. <laughs> I don't think it would work, but video game wise, it's just it, it makes you look a bit more together. I don't know. I, I don't know why I picked up the habit of just automatically reloading. I think it was. I think it was literally Time Crisis that, uh, you know, the arcade version of Time Crisis. Oh, yeah. yeah when that, that was out, it kept sense. saying, reload, and you'd just reload automatically, and you'd be like, all right, I've got to keep my gun fully loaded at all times. Shoot off screen to reload. Yeah. Yeah. Mission ending. I'm going somewhere else now. The black screen tells you you're going somewhere else, that you've done a good job. And it goes into a cutscene. Look at that, look at that. That's beautiful. Look at that Very ocean. Nice. And my rusty knackered ship turns up and ruins it. Why can't we just look at that ocean some more? Your single engine ship. Well, this is like the first ship you get. Everything's upgradable. Everything. You know, I've always tested that, you know, when it gives you like a story giver. I always want to shoot them in the face. I don't know what that says about me. But she's presenting the back to me again. Like I said, it's war. Things happen. Nobody would know if I shot her and she died and I just stood there whistling. I, I think nothing people to see would here. know. What, sorry? I think people would know, be, uh, given that we have this video. <laughs> no, no, I mean, if this was like the reality that we live in. I don't even know what we're getting at. I lost you ages ago. Yeah, we're 51 minutes into this, so yeah, I think it's pretty safe to say I'm just making stuff up now. And this, do you, you know what I'm doing here? You see those numbers that go when I, I press square on these things, so I dismantle what I don't need or what's not useful. All right, you keep and the best turn, one. And, that's, and that turns into currency, which you can spend in um, shops to get new equipment and upgrades and okay. whatnot. And you don't have an incumbent. Look at that guy. He's thinking of shooting her in the face too. We'll be fine. I'm not the only one who thinks this stuff. Look at him. He just stood there holding his gun to his face. He's a monster. You're a monster. Uh, yeah, but I, I, I've established this. The farm is the overworld. So this is coming to an end now. Because I made sure it ended in the farm for this footage. See, they call it uh, the farm, but it wasn't the farm where all the humans were kept in the Matrix. Maybe, maybe that's a reference to, but the farm, is, yeah, you're at the farm because at the first mission, you're at the, the hub environment for the first game, which is basically destroyed by that invasion force, and Earth is basically a wasteland of wrecked nonsense and eagles that follow you. That's a reference to the first missions, by the way. Eagles and that follow so, you. Yeah, you, you don't know where you're going, so you're just wandering, and you think, oh, that eagle's following me. Ghost says the eagle's following you because your character basically says nothing. And you're being guided along by a weird eagle. Look at that. That's like Doctor Who, that is. True, yeah. Imagine if Doctor Who went around space shooting everybody. That series would be... Imagine if <laughs> just in the middle of this, you just <laughs> ra you just crashed into a TARDIS. Do -do 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 -do. I don't know. I don't know the Doctor Who theme tune. I don't watch it anymore. It's vacated my memory. But yeah, this is. Sorry, I saw the blue thing by the side there. I thought it was a TARDIS. These are the people. The people online. Oh, these are all your uh, fellow. See them. See, there we go. There's robot face. How could you not pick robot face? Look at them. Look at that beautiful mug. So these are all your fellow guardians. Yeah, I don't like running. I have to jump everywhere. Only idiots walk. <laughs> yeah. These are sort of basically the shop people, you know. Yeah. Every game has this sort of stuff. See? Another woman in a shop. I told you, this is what Bethesda is. Not Bethesda, completely different entity. This is what uh, Bungie are doing. Okay. They're all quest givers. Or shop owners. And a, well, I'm basically fabricating something because, you know, 
something out of nothing. <sighs> so, it's winding down now. Yep. I think I've said everything which I could possibly say, uh, say for the community aspect and the raids and whatnot. This is like entirely story based. Okay, stuff. that's that's not female, is she? He? It? Uh, yeah. <laughs> don't ask me, Rob. Just don't ask me. I don't know what that is. It's well, our site ninety nine forty. All I can say is that there goes your all, shop, all shopkeepers are female theory. Now that one's a guy in a suit with horns in down there under the stairs. It's not a theory, I'm just kind of poking fun. I know. There's the eagle that I was talking about. That's the eagle that helped me. I was going to say, she looks nothing like an eagle. And then I noticed yeah. the bird in the background. Wish yeah. that years ago. But that then yeah. got me thinking, how on, this is sci-fi. Why does she have an eagle? A space eagle. Surely a drone would be better. It's not as cool. I'm sorry, but it's just not as cool. But, so any sort of closing thoughts as a spectator? Um, what, what, it's interesting I mean, to watch it. It's interesting to watch someone play it, but I think this is one of those games where I'd much prefer to play it myself. Uh, show me a game which that isn't the case. I mean, I've got to do jumping again because I'm an idiot. I know plenty of games where people would like to think that's not the case, but the, uh, the honest truth is every single video game in history is better when you play it rather than watch it. It's more enjoyable, I should it's say. Is that a cruel snipe at the first type of this video on our first type of this video? No, I just think it's <laughs> it's you know it's satire. <laughs> watching people play video games is nowhere near as much fun as playing that video game yourself. Oh, of course, of course. I will say though, this area is nowhere near as colourful or interesting as the one from the first game. Just to draw some sort of conclusions here, I think it's largely the same as the first game. There's no major leaps. It's just been generally a cleaned up experience. Does that make sense? Yeah. Makes total sense. It's like a learning process. Yeah. Every, it, it's more, I guess you could sort of define it as sort of patches. So Trustland is the is European the DLC. Z. Sorry, Trustland is the European Z Dead Zone. That's yeah. where you're heading to now. Yeah. Anyway, um, we are wrapping up now. So if you did enjoy this and you would like to see us do more of this type of video, we are up for it. You know, yeah. we are interested in doing this sort of thing. So. If you are interested in us doing it, do more of these. If you want to see us do more of these, please do comment below telling us or comment below on any of the nonsense that we came up with during this because, frankly, there was a lot. A lot yes. of it was Star Wars based, but, yeah, what are you going to do? But otherwise, click on the videos that are on the screen, follow us, give us a subscribe, find us on social media, or follow us on Patreon. But until next time, I've been Rob. I've been Rob. And thanks for watching.